Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Time to catch up with uh, my a good friend, and that, of course, is Grant Nisbet. Nisbo, how are you? How's, how's your weekend going? Yeah, good day, Ron. Uh, not too bad, mate. Yeah, of course, we had the game here on uh, Saturday night, which was which was a pretty good game, and the Hurricanes carried on their winning way, so it made for a pretty damn good weekend. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good crowd in there as well, wasn't it? It wasn't too bad at all. Yeah, nearly 22,000, which I think is the best one of the season. Uh, of course, it's their last game of the season at the stadium because, uh, uh, of course, there's no final. But nevertheless, um, no, it was good. And I think the fans have responded well to this latest competition. They've, they've rolled in in just about every venue. Yeah, they have. Um, I say, I, Mark Reason, who, who I like, I think he writes very well, but he, he, uh, he's going on about... Um, uh, playoffs, uh, the equivalent of uh, match fiction. You shouldn't even bother with it. If it's, if uh, for instance, uh, that Christchurch boys have won it, well, they've won it. You don't have to play again. I can't quite work that one out. Yeah, um, I got mixed feelings on this one. I, I, I mean, they would have they would have had home advantage in the final, obviously, because they're the top qualifiers. But uh, we're sort of used to finals these days. I know. It's quite an American way of doing things. I mean, the English Premier League, of course, they play a lot of games in a season, I think 38, and whoever's on top at the end, they win it. But in a short competition like this, I think I would have preferred a final. Um, just to give it a little bit of a full stop, um, it just seems a little bit unsatisfactory that we play this weekend with no meaning at all, other than who finishes second and third. Yeah, I, yeah. I, for instance, okay, um, they go up and they play uh, the Orca Loafers, and yep. uh, the Hurricanes. Who do they play? Who do they play this weekend? They're down in Dunedin on oh. Saturday night. So, well, what's the uh, point of that? Yeah, well, well, there's no point. But of course, when they did the draw, there might have been a lot of point to it. But that's that's really what I'm saying. I suppose yeah. that um, there would have been a good scrap between the Blues, who, as you say, host the Crusaders, or the Hurricanes, who are down in Dunedin, as to who might make the final against the Crusaders at home. It would have, had, would have added a bit of meaning to the last week. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, it, it would have too. It is what it is, I guess. I see um, um, New Zealand Rugby's broadcast, this guy favours their own supervision rather than the Aussies uh, that uh, want to come aboard, you know, at full strength by the look of things? Yeah, look, this is going to be a very interesting discussion and uh, I'm not sure where they're at. I see the, the Australians have put some pressure on because they want to be involved, of course. Uh, I think the only issue with what we're playing at the moment is that there will become a certain sameness about it. Um, you know, we've only got five teams, so home and away you get eight games uh, which doesn't really constitute much of a season. It's a pretty short season, so I just get the feeling they need more teams in there. Now, where they get them from, I'm not sure. The, the Australians are very insistent that they need more than two teams in the competition. Whether they get their request or not, I don't know. I mean, if they end up having to play a competition amongst themselves, I don't think that's got much substance either. So there's some very interesting discussions unfolding here. Is there, is there any other country that can do it outside, well, you know, as well as the Australians? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know where South Africa sits in all this, and I'm not sure where Argentina sits in all this either. And then, of course, we've got the Pacific Islands, which we've tried to incorporate as well. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty interesting discussion coming up. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? What did you think of the golf over the weekend? Uh, I saw. I actually sat down and watched the last round yesterday, and I'm very, very impressed with um, Colin Mur- Murakawa. Is that his name? Yeah, that's it. Murakawa. Yeah, yeah. twenty-three year oh, old. It's not bad. Never is heard it? of it, mate. Ah, he's won yeah. already uh, on tour. Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. their PGA win. So, yeah. I mean, I did. I was pretty surprised and uh, interested in his uh, his calmness. I mean, he played a great shot on the 16th. He pulled out a driver and drove the green and was putting for an eagle and got it, and that pretty much sealed the tournament. Um, and he just looked fearless to me, and I think we're going to hear a lot more of him. But, you know, it was it was a great tournament, even though there was no one there. I mean, I think I'm 
With about an hour to go, in other words, when players still had about five or six holes to play, there were five or six blokes sitting on top of the leaderboard, all ten under. And you kind of got the feeling, and the winner eventually did it, that somebody had to do something significant to break away from the pack, and he sure did. So, no, it was a, it was a, it was a very good tournament. And, of course, they're only playing three majors this year because the British Open has been canned. Um, and so we've only got the Masters and the US Open left to play. Uh, and I guess the other golfing story of the week was um, poor old Lydia Ko, when we all thought she was going to finally crack another tournament after two years in the wilderness. And um, and she folded, sadly. Um, but I'm encouraged by the fact that she's, you know, back and battling with the best now anyway. Oh, yeah, and it does. And, and she looks a lot different too, doesn't she? she yeah, she, totally different. Yeah, totally she, different shape. I yeah, mean, it, uh, yeah. I think she's probably got taller. Um, and she seems to have uh, dropped a bit of weight. And uh, so, um, I mean, if you looked at photos from two or three years ago when she was playing well, and today I think you'd see almost a different person. Yeah, you would. Uh, she's, she, yeah, she's, she looks a lot stronger, though, and I think that, I mean, that helps, you know. Yeah, you know, well, she lot. never did get great length off the tee. Um, so, you know, if she's, if she's bulked up a wee bit or, you know, uh, added a bit of power to a game, that'd be good because... Uh, she used to suffer a wee bit by being, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 metres short of arrivals off the tee. What do you think of uh, Sonny Bill Williams' uh, thoughts on um, getting to play in uh, Australia and uh, getting looking forward to it? Yeah, look, I mean, he was a league guy yeah. right back, wasn't he? And he decided to have a crack at rugby and... And he made a pretty good fist of that. But he's gone back to league. He's, he's getting a bit long in the tooth. Um, he's gone to the Roosters. So um, I'll be interested to see how he goes. Uh, he was over in Canada, and it looks like that sort of folded. So he's gone back to the Roosters. And he'll be a headline grabber, no doubt. Um, and I think he's looking at signing again next year. You kind of wonder when all this is going to end. You do, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And he's got to go back and play, I think, uh, for the other for his other club. Oh, you know, does he in the Super League? Yeah, yeah it's okay. Toronto. Okay. He's got to go and play for them as well. So, Well, it's not quite so easy to move around the world these days. I mean, no. it's all real to say he's got to go to Canada, but usually entails um, flying over there and sitting in a hotel room for two weeks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what he's been doing, of course, going to Aussie as well. Yeah, he's, correct. Yeah, but he's out of it a bit. All right, mate, as ever, it's, it's good to talk to you, and we'll catch up uh, later in the week, eh? Good on you, mate. Thank, Thank you. Easy. That is our commentator, Grant Nisbet, here on the beach. 106.3 Beach FM.